hey, is it just me, or do the Democrats look like deer in headlights these days? You know, they throw everything but the kitchen sink at Donald Trump, and his numbers keep going up. Joe Biden, on the other hand, can't seem to do anything right. It's a disaster. Like this here. Trump's favorability rating is 11.7% higher than Joe Biden's. But some people in the Democratic Party are, are getting it, and they're voicing their concerns out loud. In Trump's more ahead than he's ever been. More, fewer people think January 6th was any kind of what it was, is an assault on the temple of democracy, the Constitution. I don't know what the you want to say. It's going the wrong way. It's not working. Everything that we're throwing is spaghetti at a wall and none of it is sticking, me included. And it's, it's hard when you start in your 80th year and you, you, you know, like anybody else, I have an opinion of myself. And the opinion I've come to is I don't matter. It doesn't matter. You can, you can prepare, you, you can be on TV, or you can write pieces, you can have a YouTube channel, you can have a podcast, and nothing, nothing. And, you know, we we got to, like, try to think of something different it, because what we're doing is really, really not working. Thing interesting in this polling was more independents said that they worry about President Biden weakening democracy than Trump, 53 percent to 42 percent. What do you make of this? I find it shocking, honestly. I, I, I can't I can't, you know, make sense of that number. I wish I could. I wish I had some really great insight to it. But it, I, I don't know if it's an outlier or not, because the other numbers with independents and Biden are going in the right direction. So that may it be it. But also, just one thing I wanted to add on to what Basil said. You know, this trial's not on TV. You guys do a great job reporting what's happening. But if there aren't those images coming out of the courthouse, people feel like they know this story. We kind of we've heard about it for a long time. So it doesn't surprise me that they're not interested. On the economy, he was very defensive. He said he's already done, already turned it around. But that's not the way people are experiencing the economy. They're experiencing it through the lens of uh, the cost of living. And he is a man who's built his career on empathy. Mm. Where, where is, why not lead with the empathy? Some harsh critique from David Axelrod in regard to how President Joe Biden handled himself in discussing the economy with CNN's Aaron Burnett. Now keep in mind, Axelrod used to work closely with Biden and Obama during the Obama administration. But here's what Biden said that Axelrod felt wasn't really a good way of handling messaging as it pertains to the economy. Let's watch. Why should people here believe that you will succeed at creating jobs where Trump failed? He's never succeeded in creating jobs, and I've never failed. I've created over 15 million jobs since I've been president. 15 million in three and three, three quarters years. Trump is, he, he started off with the golden show, shovels, you know. For the digging, groundbreaking. For the groundbreaking, yeah. and talked about this being, uh, you know, the eighth wonder of the world. When has he ever done anything he said? I'm not being facetious. Think about it. He started off, he lost, other than Herbert Hoover, he's the only other president, lost more jobs than created in his four-year term. Yeah, so Biden has two giant problems. One is on the things he's good at, which is jobs, which I'll break down in a second. Uh, he's just a terrible communicator. The, the interviewer there almost has to help him and prod him to get to the right talking point. And uh, does he make it forcefully? <laughs> I mean, he can't speak forcefully at all. Uh, and then, of course, he's got the second problem, which is that he's ignoring the elephant in the room in terms of why people are struggling with this economy. He so has good. created 15 million jobs, that's true. Now, a lot of that was get, recovering from the pandemic, that's true. But, it, and he, what he says about Trump is not exactly right. We've explained that before on the show. Uh, Trump created about 180,000 jobs per month, which is actually a really good number before the pandemic hit. The but, second problem is, is we're gonna point out here a lot, uh, the prices are have gone up uh, for food, healthcare, and uh, and and housing 
And so these are huge problems, especially mortgage rates on houses. Uh, but he doesn't address that at all. No, he doesn't. And but uh, instead, he's pretending that those problems don't exist, which is a terrible idea. White House is still scrambling, scrambling after President Biden's CNN interview earlier this week, where he threatened to stop sending weapons to Israel if they move forward with the Rafa offensive. Actually, he did stop. Madeline Rivera is, in li is live in Washington. Madeline. Hey, good morning, guys. Republicans are accusing President Biden of giving in to the demands of the far left flank. Now, the president must also navigate the growing rift between the anti and pro Israel factions of his own party. Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman says, for instance, hard disagree and deeply disappointing. On the other hand, progressives believe the president's decision to condition aid to Israel is a sign that protests like the ones roiling college campuses are working. A Democratic mega donor also says bad, bad decision on all levels. Please reconsider. Let's not forget that there are more Jewish voters who care about Israel than Muslim voters that care about Hamas. Let's listen once more to the president's red line. I made it clear that if they go into Rafah, they haven't gone into Rafah yet. If they go into Rafah, I'm not supplying the weapons that have been used historically to deal with Rafah. The president and his team have been clear for several weeks that we do not support a major ground operation in Rafah, where more than a million people are sheltering with nowhere safe to go. The president has said that publicly, and he has communicated that repeatedly and straightforwardly to Prime Minister Netanyahu. Right. All right. Thank you, Madeline. In her report, it. she talked about that letter from this big mega donor. He's a billionaire. He's number 23 on Forbes' richest American list. And uh, his net worth is like $2.8 billion. But he said he thinks it's a bad decision and we need to reconsider. There are more Jewish voters than there are uh, that care about Israel than there are Muslim voters. It's Christianity is our number one religion, 63%. Judaism is number two. So if he really cares about the voters, and it seems that he's pandering to the voters in Michigan and Wisconsin by going back on this and holding back the weapons, he needs to think about that. They're more Jewish people. And many people I've talked to that are Jewish are saying they're now, they're not voting for him mm -hmm. because of this. Uh, cutting off aid, that is something that Joe Biden said he would not do. I was almost incensed at the idea in 2019. The idea that we would cut off military aid to an ally, our only true, true ally in the entire region is absolutely preposterous. That was in 2019, Brian, Ta and he Five was talking ago. directly about Israel. So and, and by the way, Jen Psaki just revealed where most of the Democratic Party is. He should have, she's telling Stephen Colbert, we, the president should have done this earlier, threatened Israel. Instead of trying to find out what the right numbers are, how you fight in an urban environment, talk to a military person about what exactly Israel's doing and what their objective is, they quickly got to say, well, there's protests on campus, Michigan's going south, so that's why the president should take weapons away. How about our allies of democracy? They were attacked October 7th, worst time since the 1940s. A guy who was Hitler was presiding over it. Hamas, just as bad, only there's more of them. And now you just ask yourself this question, what's the objective to wipe out Hamas? Where are they in Rafa? How many are left? 8,000. Where, where's, where's the head man? Sinwar. Where is he? In the tunnels of Rafa. Why would you not go in? How dare you not allow a country that was just lost 2,200 people in a brutal massacre, including young people at a constant for peace? How dare you tell them they can't go in and get the people responsible? And That's what he should be saying. Every person that dies is on Hamas's hands. And don't forget, they're American hostages that are being held still. Within. Yeah, he never brings that up. No. He never brings up the hostages either. Uh, everybody wants hostages out. That's, uh, that's the only reason why they, uh, these other guys are still alive. But the other thing to, to keep in mind, too, is that the President of the United States could be also defining for people the reason why hospitals are hit is because they're headquarters for Hamas. The reason why playgrounds and schools are hit because they're weapons depots for Hamas. It would be great if the President said that once in a while instead of when he finally does an interview just throwing Israel under the bus. Mixed messages from Joe Biden and not addressing the real problems of American citizens. And they wonder why Donald Trump is ahead. Hey, is this mic on?